Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I am uh, going to be doing my March TBR. I am going to participate in two month long readathons and so I'm going to have a bunch of mysteries and a bunch of middle grade and then there's one other book that I have to throw in because me and my friend's buddy reading it but most of it's going to be mystery and middle grade and if you'll you'll notice I'm in a different spot I'm trying to uh, decide if I like filming over here versus where I was filming and I also have a little bit of extra like lighting and it is kind of cloudy outside so hopefully the lighting in my room will make this bright enough hopefully anyway let's get on with the readathons so uh, I'm going to be doing talking about March Mystery Madness first and this is hosted by Lizzie Fay Loves Books and um, she has some other co-hosts and everything, which I can't think of, but I'll put everything down below. And um, the goal here is to read five five books or to read a book from their prompts, and that would get you five books. But to at least read five books. But even if you just read one mystery, you're still participating. But this is their fifth year doing it, or I guess it's either the fifth time they've done it or fifth year. And so they are celebrating five by doing things in fives. And so... Uh, reading five books or uh, reading five uh, from their prompts and so with that I'll just I'll just get into the prompts but the one is um, read the fifth book in a series I have uh, murder in the reading room by Ellery Adams this is the fifth book in the uh, book retreat mystery series and uh, I really enjoy this series it's a lot of fun it's about um, a secret a library that has a bunch of rare books and stuff and this one family has always protected these books and they have a book retreat so they always have a lot of people coming and going and they are always uh, finding some new rare books and things and then of course there's a uh, murder and mayhem that happened and everything and it's uh it's really good I like it um, I've liked pretty much everything that Ellery Adams does read a book with five or more words in the title and for that one, I am going to be reading uh, Let the Dead Keep Their Secret by Rosemary Simpson. This is the third book in the Gilded Age mystery series. And I enjoyed the first two in this series. And sorry about the lighting. I don't know what's going on. It, um, it's really good. It's uh, set in New York. Like it says, the Gilded Age. So it's a historical mystery. And it's about, I think her name was Prue and then this guy named Jeffrey and um, they're always solving mysteries and stuff together and it's really good then the next one is a book with page count divided by five and I've been needing to read the first in this one series because I've got like all of them and I've not read any of them so I went ahead and picked uh, pain and suffering by Cheryl Holen and I believe this book has 320 pages so it divides by five and I don't really know a whole lot anything really about this series I just know that I have all of the books and I need to read them but it's a cozy mystery and I like cozy mystery so I'm sure it'll work really well it's a a webs glass shop mystery so it's about whoever owns the glass shop and then there's a um, a book, pub, a book first published in a year divisible by five. And I went ahead and went with a book that I have an e-arc of that I need to read now because I haven't got to it yet. I think it's already out, but it's called Ten Days Gone by Beverly Long. And this is kind of more like a mystery thriller, but I'm going to use it because <laughs> I need to read it. And um, I... Like I said, I have no clue what it's about. It's an A.L. McKentrick novel, and I know I read the synopsis before, and now I've forgotten what it was about, but it, it's a mystery thriller, so it's got to be good, right? Then there's a, a book with wood on the cover, and for that I'm going to double up and read uh, The Murder in the Reading Room by Ellery Adams because it had a wood floors on the cover. And um, that's for the prompts and everything. That's the ones I'm doing like with the prompts that they have. But I do have um, other books that I need to read that are mystery. And so I'll just show you those. 
I'm buddy reading this series with my friend, so I need to get to the third one. And this is Kindness Goes Unpunished by Craig Johnson. It's the third in the Longmire series. And um, this one, Walt goes to Philadelphia because his daughter gets beat up or something. And him and his friend, Harry Standing Bear, go there to uh, try to help the police figure out who done it. I have... The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner. This is the third book in the Unsub series. And this one is about the Midnight Man. And each of her books are always based on an actual serial killer. But she just fictionalizes it and kind of changes things. But you can usually figure out who it is. This one is about a man who's going into houses. He sneaks in like through windows and things. Nobody ever hears him come in. And he gets there and he usually uh, kills a husband and wife and leaves the little kids. But he will he will actually talk to the kids. And there's these ones where, I've already started this one. So there's ones where uh, like he told them like he's the Legion and uh, some other things. And calls himself the Midnight Man. And he had eyes on the palms of his hands and things like that. And so I'm pretty sure that this one is based on the Night Stalker. Her other two books were based on the Zodiac Killer and Ted Bundy. And so this one, I'm pretty sure, is the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker had pentagrams on the palm of his hands, and he has eyes. And kind of does the same thing as this guy, so I'm fairly certain. Anyway, it these are always really, really good. And so I can't wait to get into this one more. And here is another E-Arc. And the... Um, the Meg Gardner one was in New York too, but here's another one, and this one comes out this month, and it's All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban, and this is your basic uh, UA mystery where there's like a whole bunch of them, and they're together, and somebody is uh, killing and things. I mean, it's kind of the standard UA trope, I think, nowadays, it seems like, but I'm always a sucker for them. And then, hopefully, I have time to get to Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen. And this one is about some women who go missing. And there is a young a psychic who starts seeing disturb, disturbing things that she thinks has something to do with the missing or whatever. And that's pretty much all I know. I didn't really read the whole synopsis because I didn't want to get spoiled. And so it sounded good, and so hopefully it is. And this is an ERC 2 that comes out this month. And of one more mystery, and this one I need to fit in because it has to go back to the library on the 7th. But it's uh, Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. It's the second in the Hercule Perot series. And I really love the first one. That was my first attempt at Agatha Christie. And I just, I really, really liked it. And I couldn't believe how much I liked it. And gotta get to this one. I've only read like a couple of pages now I'm like on page four but I'm pretty sure I'll like it and it's really thin so I should be able to get through it and hopefully I can get through all of those mysteries if not I mean that was a lot of mysteries and I do have middle grade a middle grade thing to go through so we'll see how that goes and now I'm on to my uh, TBR for middle grade March and middle grade March is hosted by two ladies. Uh, I think Krista from Books and Jam, but I'm not sure who the other lady is. So like I said before, I'll just link their information below. And uh, so they have a, a group read. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get to all their prompts because I do have some middle grade e-arcs and arcs that I need to fit in. So I was really going to just concentrate on them. But uh, I did thought, I thought the group read sounded really good and I found it on Overdrive, so I'm going to give it a try. And it's called The Book of Boy by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. And it was a Newbery Honor winner, I think, or something like that. And um, this one is set in medieval time and it's about a, a boy named Boy. And um, he goes on an adventure with this pilgrim. I've read like 14% of it so far, and it's okay so far. But he's on, he, this pilgrim, uh, seen how good he was at jumping and climbing, and he wanted to take him. But the boy is a, a hunchback, and he gets made fun of and everything. So he, 
he takes him as a servant and he's wanting him pretty much just to hold his pack and everything but he also has plans for him for when uh, they get to certain places he wants him to be able to climb up and jump and get whatever it is he needs and the boy soon realizes that uh, they're stealing relics and not doing what he thought they were doing and but he keeps going because he's hoping that if they get to the point where they're going that maybe uh, St. Peter will be able to um, heal him maybe and make him like other boys because he's got the hunchback. And it's it sounds like it might be cute. He talks to an oh, he talks to animals too. And so I thought that might be kind of interesting. But the prompts that they have for uh, middle grade March is a book with illustrations. And this has illustrations on the tops of every... Uh, like it has little illustrations and stuff on the top so uh it covers that and uh it's kind of a mystery but even though i still ha i have a book for that it's set in another country and i didn't have one for that so we'll use that one for that so it's set in another country but the book i have i do have a one that's a we need to get one that's a book about books or stories and I've always wanted to read this series, but I've just never gotten around to it. And so I'm listening to this one on um, Overdrive. Yeah, I'm listening to it on Overdrive. And it's The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris uh, Colfer. Whatever. And it's about these two kids who kind of get swept up into a fairy tale story or a land or something. And... I've listened to a little bit of it, and it seems like um, the evil queen was telling Snow White her story because she says, uh, you know, you might see me this way, but there was always more to the story, and she's not tell her story. So it sounds like it might be kind of cute, and I've heard a lot about it, so I've always wanted to try it. So. And for uh, a mystery book, because it says, you know, just to read uh, middle grade with the mystery elements, and I read the first one, and I really liked it, and I have an e-arc of this one, and so I want to get to it, and that's... Um, the Greystone Secrets number two, The Deceivers by uh, Margaret Peterson Haddix. And in the first one, the three main characters, the, let's see, there is two sisters and a brother. And um, they all have kind of a little bit of unique skills, which is good because they find out that there seem to be uh, another three kids with their names and the same, uh, like, height and everything and they're every and they find out you know there's something's going on and their mother goes missing and so they decide to kind of figure figure out what's going on and there's like a parallel universe type thing and everything and so and this one is just a continuation and i can't really say because i don't want to spoil what happened to the end of the other one but i really liked it so i can't wait to get to this one and I didn't have anything for a book to screen adaptation because um, none of the books that I wanted to read fit in with that. But I do have some other books that I need to read. I have an e-arc of uh, The Secrets of the White Stone Gates by Julie Noble. This is the second book in, I don't know what the series is called, but <laughs> it's the second book. The first one was... Mystery of Hollow Gate or something. I will put it down here so y'all know. But uh, anyway, I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. It was a little dull, but I'm hoping maybe the second one's going to be better. And it was calling to me. I just love that cover, so I had to give it a try. And another one that I have absolutely no clue what it's about. It just sounded really good, and it's a magical type one. And I have the e arc for that one too. And it's called The Slug Cream Chronicles by S. O. Thomas. And I mean, it, the cover called to me and it just sounded like it would be really good. And I know it's a magical type book. I just can't remember exactly what it's about. Sorry. And then I've been working on this one, but I hadn't got it finished yet because I had a lot of other things and I do need to get it finished. And this one is um, The Last Dragon by James Riley. It's the second in the Revenge of Magic series. And this one is the first... Well, the first one was about a boy named Fort. And something happens 
in the National Monument with him and his father, and something happens badly ha bad happens to his father. He gets sent to live with his aunt, and while he but while he was at the National Monument, he kept hearing somebody in his head. He didn't know where it was coming from, but they were telling him to run. And uh, soon, not soon, not too long after that, uh, Doctor Oppenheimer, ah, that's the name, Doctor Oppenheimer, comes to his aunt and says he wants to bring him to a special school and that he's going to be learning magic and he doesn't know anything about that but he thinks that sounds pretty cool and maybe it would give him a chance to redeem himself a little bit and it's usually it's after there was this uh, time that was called discovery day when they found these magical books but they also realized that only kids born after d-day could actually read what was in the books so they're training these kids up to read these books and they're like one of them can like see book is about seeing the future and one's uh healing and one is like uh destruction and you know there's things that aren't really nice and uh fort's kind of figuring out that you know they're trying to use these kids for bad things and there was some older kids that were before him that gotten into this magic and one of them brought some of these ancient uh creatures uh up to uh well i guess out of a parallel universe of some sort in any way and they're called the old ones and um in this one he's having to deal with some information he found out from the last one and these he keeps having these dreams about the old ones and they're wanting him to do something and I need to get it finished. I didn't get very far into it. I'm only about that far into it. But I need to finish it. But I do like it. And I like this series. But I should be getting uh, sometime soon here in like the next week or so. And I'll be getting an arc of The Future King. Which is the third book in the Revenge of Magic series. And so I definitely need to get that one finished. So that I can jump into this one cover is really cool but it features fort and his friends again and everything and can't wait to get to that one i did uh get i was watching too many people's like tbrs and i was wanting like oh i want to read that or i want to read that it's a bad thing to do whenever you already have a lot of books that you need to read but um i did see a book and it is on hoopla which i'm excited because everybody's been talking about um the Winter House by um, Ben Gerson. And so I'm kind of hoping that I'll be able to get to it if I have time since it is an audio and everything. But it's it's a mystery. And since I'm doing, you know, a mystery uh, read-a-thon, so it'll fit for both of them. So I like that. And I do have one book that has nothing to do with either being a middle grade or... Uh, mysteries but I am buddy reading it with my friend so I decided to throw it in here and this is um, The Rue by Alan Baxter and it's a horror book about uh, this scary kangaroo <laughs> and it's pretty much all I know I saw the cover and I wanted to read it and my friend wanted to read it too and so she gifted this to me and so we are going to read it this month and I can't wait and that is pretty much everything that I am hoping to fit in. That, Like I said, that's way more books than I can probably read. But I like to give myself a variety. I am kind of a mood reader. So if I don't hit the prompt books, but I read some of the books, then I'm going to be happy with that. The goal is to read mystery books for the mystery readathon, read middle grade books for the middle grade readathon. And so I'll be accomplishing that. So I'll be, I'll be okay. So... I hope you had a good time looking at my TBR, and uh, can't wait to see some other, some other people's TBRs. And I know I'll be adding a whole lot more books that I want to read that I won't be able to get to. But if you're participating, leave your uh, link down below or comment what you're going to be reading. And um, hope you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.